by the way, day, counsel, your your uh, video went off, uh, um, but I could hear you. Uh, okay. um, all right, Mr. As an Mr. Phillips, they, um, you they may did, respond. Uh, already received that. Hey, Your this, this, uh, this is a breach of contract claim. This is a claim for money sorry, damages yeah. only. There, there's no uh, fraud yeah, claim in this case. There's no fraud claim pending uh, now in the Toyota case. Uh, they have filed an amended complaint, which does not uh, have any fraud claim, and that's not been brought to your discovery, attention before. Uh, discovery has just begun in this case, which is acknowledged um, by Santander. They um, they sent me an email yesterday, the day before, looking for dates for the deposition of Mr. DeMeo, um, and they, they've just recently within, responded to uh, document requests and interrogatories, uh, which are not complete. Uh, covered by they provided Chief what I would call a Rule 26 so disclosure, will, which is the documents uh, that they would rely the upon in support of, of their claim, but not the complete documents responsive to the request. And we'll, t we'll take that up with them in a letter. Um, and move that along and hopefully move uh, that along before is the deposition of Mr. DeMeo. Um, based upon Medicare, the information they provided, Medicare, we will also be seeking uh, deposition number L of an officer um, to be named this by Santander to support their, their proof of claim, uh, here to support we, their, their uh, amounts uh, due. Uh, the, the information, information they provided, uh, as is provided the in the, the opposition to the motion uh, for summary judgment, is conclusory. It doesn't show the give and take between Santander and CTE in terms of what was paid and what wasn't paid um, and, and support adequately the, the amount due at this point in time uh, after such a passage of time with this loan. I think the fact that Santander sought discovery in this case and even moved to compel the deposition of Mr. DeMeo is telling is evidence Boyd that Bitterman discovery is required. George um, Leager, they haven't completed uh, that discovery. L we haven't one completed one our discovery. In fact, when we were there before, Your Honor, uh, I think it was four is, weeks ago, um, uh, this uh, your Honor indicated that discovery would go forward with the deposition of Mr. DeMeo and Santander within 30 days after they provided their uh, discovery responses, which was, I think, just earlier this week, perhaps late, late last week. I forget if it's on, off my head. So those those depositions are being arranged. Um, there, there are, of course, issues with the current situation and whether we can have live depositions or how we're going to have those depositions and when we can have those depositions. But based upon all that, Your Honor, the motion is premature at this time. We don't know how much is due. We don't we see the proof of claim, but it's a it's a claim. It's not a judgment. It's not a it's not a definitive statement of the amount due. CTE has no no impetus <laughs> to contest that claim at this point in time. Santander's claim is an unsecured claim. Um it's I don't know what it will be paid in the bankruptcy, but I think Santander would allege next to nothing. Sure. So there's no, certainly no impetus on, on the part of CTE to, to contest that claim in the bankruptcy. And Mr. DeMeo has no control over that claim in the bankruptcy at this point in time either. So he can't go in and contest that claim. So on the basis of all that, Your Honor, we would, we would assert that this motion is still premature. Um, there's no, there's no prejudice to Santander. They don't have a right to jump ahead of any other creditor with respect to Mr. DeMeo or any other unsecured debtor. They just don't have that right. It's not, it's not prejudice. It's not something you can even get restraints upon. And we'll address that in a, in a moment, I, I, I presume. So you want to assert that's uh, this motion. I'm go sorry? ahead. Go ahead. Finish. I was just going to wrap up and say that we would assert that this motion should be denied this time. Okay, Mr. Uh, Phillips, I have a question for you. Um, do you, um, what did your client do to try to acquire the information necessary to um, prove payments on this? I mean, you have access to the files. Um, so what, what, ha what action have you taken? Your Honor, we, we um, serve document requests and interrogatories on Santander, who has those records as well, but haven't provided them even as of yet. We have not subpoenaed CTE. Uh, we can subpoena CTE, uh, and we'll go ahead and do so. But we don't have access to those records now. All of those records are in the, the hands of counsel for CTE1, which is a firm called Arendt Fox out of New York, um, and in, in the, the possession of the the CRO, the, the credit restructuring officer who was appointed to handle CTE woman. All right, let me ask you this. So what have you done to get access to those records? 
I know that you said this before. There is a way to get access to it. And I just wondered if you uh, pursued that at all. We have not seen um, the bank of the, the bank of the state yet. No, we haven't done that yet, yet, Your Honor. We focused on Santander and served them document requests because we believe that they should have all of those documents as well. All right. So, how are you going to prove payment? You're going to accept what Santander Bank says about payment? No, um, we're going to take their suggestion and serve a subpoena on CTE one. I hope to do that by the end of the week. Well, that doesn't help by the end of the week. This is the end of the week, Council. And I think that you indicated that you were going to do that before. Um, so it appears that nothing's really happened uh, regarding that. Um, all right. Um, Honor, I, was, I was hoping to get that information from Santander. Um, we just got their document request recently, or their, their document responses recently. Um, and it was about, I think, around 250, 300 pages. I mean, less than they, they submitted in their, their reply papers here. So, so what did you see in there mm -hmm. that causes you uh, to inquire further? Their, their documents are conclusory. There, there's no, there's no um, entire history of the relationship, as I understand it. There's no... There's no, uh, there's no communications back and forth. Um, the complete payment record isn't there. What do you mean the complete payment record is not there? The, from what we can see, we don't think the complete payment is there. I mean, I can't state, as a matter well, of fact, it's not there. You have to be a little more specific than that. Really? I mean, um, your client needs to be proactive um, and, um, you know, deal with this. Your client's an individual. Um, his records, if he thinks CTE has uh, made payments, I, I'm sure your client hasn't made individual payments, correct? I don't believe he has, no. All right. So CTE would have made um, a claim of payments, and wouldn't, wouldn't they have done that in the bankruptcy court? I, I don't know, Your Honor. I'm not, I'm not that familiar with bankruptcy proceedings. Um, I, I would say, Your Honor, that, that we can serve the subpoena and have responses um, by the time we complete the depositions of Mr. DeMeo and Santander. Well, that's, well, I don't know. Why didn't you do it before? I mean, when we were in court before, about a month ago, correct? We've been almost a month about, since we've been in court. About and a month so, ago, yeah. And you haven't done a lot. Quite frankly, Your Honor, we were hoping we, to save the expense and, and not have to spend the money to, to subpoena CTE. We're hoping that the documents would be there in Santander's production. Okay. Well, you got their production. What did yes. you think? That, so very, how very they recently. Show payments? How are they going to show payments? At Santander Bank, did you, did you get an account statement? I would have to go back and check, Your Honor. Off the top of my head, I, I don't know if there was a, 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 an actual account statement there. Yes, we provided account statements for the line of credit and the credit card. Okay. Now you're sideways, Mr. O'Connell. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You're that's back on, Mr. O'Connell. That's Sal Duty. There. Wait a minute. Now you're upside down. Now you're upside down. All right. There you are. You're right side up. Okay. Good job. All right. Um, Mr. O'Connell, what do you say? Oh, I was just going to say, with respect to the document production we provided, so there's two accounts. There was the $1.5 million commercial line of credit, and then there was a commercial credit card, and we provided mm -hmm. statements for both, and they have the, the pay history and, and the accruing interest on a, on a monthly basis. Okay. 
Is there anything further, Mr. Phillips, regarding the summary judgment motion? I know, Your Honor. Okay. Um, quite frankly, this is uh, this case um, is different than some of the other cases I've considered. In this case, um, the plaintiff has given discovery to the defendant, and the defendant has not attempted to access the information that they're capable of accessing to determine um, if they dispute the amounts paid. Um, this case, uh, you know, Mr. Phillips has said pretty consistently that we need discovery, we need discovery. And I did put this off for discovery. Um, so basically, um, there has been no attempt to pursue discovery from their own perspective. They have, they have a circumstance where they can um, look at the documents to determine if payments were made, and they haven't made any attempt to do that. Um, that being said, um, they, um, they have not provided any basis for the court to deny the motion for summary judgment. Um, I have allowed discovery, um, as the plaintiff's firm has knows. But in this case, this uh, defense has not provided any or made any attempt to um, get discovery completed. Um, so at this point in time, um, I will grant a summary judgment motion to the plaintiff. Um, that being said, um, Mr. O'Connell, do you want to address the issue of restraints? Uh, yes, Your Honor. With the, particularly with the entry of a, a summary judgment, then the, the motion for restraint becomes, I, I think, even more expedited, where we will have a document judgment at some point, but in, in the interim, that house is still for sale. He's still subject to a number of lawsuits. Uh, we're still a creditor, so we, we need some kind of protection in place uh, with respect to uh, escrowing or entering a constructive trust as a sale proceeds in the amount of, of the, the summary judgment. I, I think there is a representation that it might prejudice the sale somehow in his opposition that was, to me, I read it was kind of hearsay. It was based on what a sales agent told him. There's been a certification from a sales agent. I don't know how, where the funds are directed from a sale or escrowed in a certain amount. I don't know how that would prejudice uh, a sales price or anything like that. But I don't think there's any harm in in order directing that a uh, some certain be be essentially escrowed for for our benefit because we are a creditor. All right, Mr. Um, Mr. Phillips. Your Honor, again, this, this is a money damages case, um, and in a money damages case, you, you you cannot rise to the level of irreparable harm. Um, if they had already levied, perhaps it would be different, but they have not levied, and they have no right to jump in front of other creditors, and no right to an attachment, uh, and no irreparable harm that could support the entry of an injunction. All right. Mr. O'Connell, any response? The Yes, I think the irreparable harm would be the, the liquidation of, of an asset. Well, we are a judgment creditor. We certainly, as a judgment creditor, have all kinds of rights to, to levy and execute on accounts receivable and real estate and, and bank accounts and everything. And that's that's the position that we're we're in essentially. So uh, we haven't levied on the house. But why we, there'd be no reason to levy on the house now? And, and we're not jumping in front of of anybody that's already docketed a lien in, in the form of a mortgage or, or a docketed judgment. The only thing that we'd be doing would be preventing the judgment debtor from receiving sale proceeds, which I think we're absolutely entitled to. And it's in the house is if, if the court is taking a look at the pictures of the listing, it's amazing. I think it's two lots that he turned into one. It's listed, I think, for $7.5 million. I don't know what, what the liens are on it, but, but certainly the listing price is, is well above what we're asking for in this motion. Okay, let me say this. Um, Mr. DeMeo is an individual. Um, he owns an asset. Um, the asset, at least by value or at least by um, sale price, appears to exceed the amount of this summary judgment um, that was granted. Um, the, the court 
this is what I'm considering. Um, the the sale of the home may proceed, um, and I think that there apparently um, is no um, reason not to let the sale proceed. Um, the However, funds should be escrowed uh, at least to cover this judgment. Um, that being said, Mr. O'Connell, uh, I will allow the funds in the amount of judgment to be escrowed at the closing. Let me say this. We don't know a lot about that. Is there a mortgage on this house that needs to be uh, paid? Um, and there may be other creditors that um, have already have a lien. So um, I think what I will do is I will grant your motion considering the fact that um, you have an individual, this is a significant asset. I've granted them, I've granted the motion for summary judgment and I will allow um, that amount to be escrowed. However, Mr. O'Connell, um, I can say that other creditors, especially uh, purchase money mortgage or mortgagee, may take precedence over um, your client. I, I, I don't know. Uh, we don't know much about it. But um, so I will uh, restrain the um, I will restrain the funds in the amount of the judgment. Um, allowing, um, allowing other, um, allowing, uh, an analysis at a future date, Mr. O'Connell, depending on what the, um, what other creditors may, um, have to say about it because they haven't been notified either of this request. So um, that's how I'll handle that. The sale can proceed. I will uh, require an escrow in the amount of the judgment. Um, and that, um, however, we have to understand um, that I've made no determination as to um, the position of other creditors. Uh, do, is there any, um, do you have anything that you want to add to that, Mr. O'Connell? Or No, you're right. I think the way that we conceptualize is that the, the escrowed money would be the funds that were payable to Mr. Uh, to Mayo from the sale. So it, it wouldn't, impact or interfere with the, with the superior mortgages. All right. And, and if we can, we're happy to do a, you know, a motion for turnover and put everybody on notice, but I don't think there would be any, I think they, they would have had to, to have their mortgages paid off for the, the sale to go through. Well, usually they pay it off for the, at the sale council. Yeah. At the closing, they do a payout, payoff. Um, so we'll say, um, in any event, that's what the order will say. So um, that is that is it. Anything anything further, Mr. O'Connell? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Phillips. Anything further? I know, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Counsel. Um, that concludes this motion. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Your Honor.